our best friends and very old friends indeed. There's evidence that humans began to domesticate dogs some 30,000 years ago, as long before we tamed the horse or started keeping livestock. And this is the nose that always knows. A dog's sense of smell is about a million times better than that of humans. Dogs also inhale up to 300 times per minute in short breaths. That means their olfactory cells are constantly supplied with new odour particles. And it's because of that amazing organ that dogs are being brought into the front line in the fight against coronavirus. Welcome to this DW COVID-19 special. I'm Rob Watts in Berlin. It's great to have you with us. We know that testing is crucial to trying to control coronavirus. Millions of people the world over have already received a swab to the mouth or nose in the name of stopping its spread. But researchers in Finland are trying a new way of sniffing out COVID-19. For a treat, preferably cat food, this snout can be programmed to find just about anything. Mold, bed bugs, cancer. Now it could change the course of coronavirus detection. Meet Kussi. Rescued from being euthanized as a puppy in Spain, he's returned that favor for years, sniffing out deadly disease for the Wise Nose Smell Detection Association in Finland. As COVID-19 began to spread, Kussi was asked as an experiment to try to detect it. It took it about seven minutes to figure out that, okay, this is what they want me to look out for. So that totally blew our minds. Have you ever seen a dog be able to change training sense in seven minutes? No, no. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> the team quickly learned canines can detect a COVID-19 infection even five days before symptoms appear with almost 100% accuracy. Helsinki Airport is hosting a pilot project through December that will include cross-referencing canine results with those from medical devices. It needs to touch the skin cell here. It just takes a simple swab from a wrist or neck. That's good. And then, and then just the jar, yes, and then just wait a couple of seconds. A dog can tell immediately if a person has contracted coronavirus. All right, thank you. So I received a negative uh, result. The voluntary tests are proving popular, but no okay. positive signal yet from the Finnish government about scaling up the program. So since dogs are incredibly more effective, much less expensive and far less intrusive than other ways of detecting the virus, why aren't public authorities everywhere rushing to use their noses instead of ours? We found one who is. Timo Arnkutte is deputy mayor of Vanta, the site of the airport. I considered it in two minutes. It took me two minutes. Arunkutta's budget covers the free tests offered to all arriving passengers. He allocated 330,000 euros total to the four-month dog study. Meanwhile, he expects it will cost up to 3 million euros per month for the medical option, the nasal swab. It's quite expensive operation, of course, and the dogs are like 75,000 now a month. Arunkutta says the data from this study should help bring in federal funds for expansion of canine testing, as well as legal adjustments to upgrade the virus-sniffing dog's authority to that of their counterparts working in customs. We can have, like, uh, multi-dogs, which have, like, uh, they can smell hasses and they can smell COVID, both. Anna Hilm Bjorkman is thinking far beyond airports. We could uh, train dogs with the same samples, with the same trainers, to open up, um, you know, the, the concert halls or, or big uh, fairs or go to big working places, hospitals, elderly homes, football matches, whatever. Both Helm Bjorkman and Bavilan and warn, if Finland doesn't harness the potential of the dog program itself, they'll unleash it elsewhere. We can move because Kessy loves warm weather. She says health authorities from all over the world want to learn what these noses know. Well, I'm delighted to say we can speak to Professor Holger Folk, who is chair of the Small Animals Department at the University of Veterinary Medicine, Hanover. Thanks a lot for joining us. Can you just explain to us what exactly it is that the dogs are smelling during these tests? 
Yeah, hello, um, and thank you for the question. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we don't know because the virus doesn't smell, but we do know that the virus needs a cell and they hijack that cell and then they change the metabolism in the cell and that actually is something uh, what the dog can smell. So how can we be confident that what they are detecting is coronavirus? So um, that's a very good question to ask. Um, what we have done in our study is that we compared uh, people who had an infection with coronavirus and actually had clinical signs, so we're COVID-19 patients, compared to a control group. And those, uh, in those groups, uh, we were able to find uh, a difference um, with a 94% hit rate. Saying this, what we didn't have in that group was uh, people who had, for example, influenza virus, because at that time when we did the study, there was no influenza season. So that's what we are doing at the moment to see how good is the dog also to be able to discriminate against other uh, viruses like influenza um, or also other better coronaviruses. The stakes are obviously pretty high if the test comes back and the, 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 the result is, is wrong. Do we know how the reliability compares with more conventional coronavirus testing? Yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite comparable. Uh, I mean, you you should never forget that the dog will never replace uh, a PCR test. So it's it's just a very fast screening mechanism. And and I think you were at Helsinki Airport where you could see how fast these dogs were actually able to sniff out the, uh, the people. Um, so when you look at the pure facts, then you have a, a 96% specificity and, a, and an 83% sensitivity. Um, so it's probably more comparable to the antigen tests uh, which are out there. Um, and then obviously for us, the gold standard test was the PCR test. So all our patients were confirmed with the PCR result. So if we were to roll this out further, maybe nationwide, uh, worldwide indeed, um, would we be able to train enough dogs to detect coronavirus to actually carry that out? I think, you know, one of the, the challenges we are facing is um, that we often simplify our world too much. And what I mean with that is I think you need to have different test scenarios for different circumstances. If you run a workplace, I mean, you now saw it at, the, at, a, at an airport, uh, those sniffer dots, but if you work in, uh, if you have a workplace, even a hospital, right, one of the things you don't have is time. So until you get your PCR test results back, it takes at least a day, um, sometimes two or three days. Until then, you already have uh, quite a limited workforce. So where these antigen tests or the sniffer dogs come in is that you can actually do a very fast screening test and hopefully then get this confirmed by your PCR results. So I think that's where I could see the dogs being able to, to fill a gap. Um, or if you go to a concert or you go to any other social events, you know, there you could potentially see um, that there could be a reliable screening tool. And just quickly, so it, it's quick, it's non-invasive, and per test it, it could be cheaper than conventional tests that we're seeing. So what is stopping this being immediately rolled out? Yeah, that's a good question, and I think you probably have asked this my, my colleagues in, in Helsinki Airport as well. I, I do probably... I, I'm not, I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. I think what it stops um, is that we can't believe that dogs can be so good in detecting medical things. We totally um, believe them when they sniff out a bomb, but we can't somehow grasp that they are able to sniff out people who have a certain infection. So perhaps we need to trust our four-legged friends a bit more. Professor Holger Falk from the University of Veterinary Medicine, Hanover, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. And now is the part of the programme where you get to ask the questions to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. How come there are so many fewer COVID-19 problems, infections and deaths in Africa? Do Africans have better immune systems than the rest of the world? There have been some pretty dire predictions over the months about the pandemic and Africa. Um, the belief was that if the virus has done so much damage in, in Europe and the Americas, um, including in, in many countries that have advanced healthcare facilities, what would it do to, to underfunded systems in, in many African nations? Um, around one in six people on the planet lives on the continent. So 
With around 43 million COVID-19 cases worldwide so far, you'd expect at least 7 million of them to have been in Africa, but there have been only about 1.5 million reported. Um, it's the same thing with deaths. Statistically, you'd expect around 200,000 there so far. Um, there have been only around 40,000 reported. Why? Underreporting uh, could explain some of the discrepancy, but the experts think other factors are also involved, especially the average age on the continent, which is only around 20. That's, that's the lowest in the world. Young people are, of course, less vulnerable, and there are also a lot fewer homes for the elderly in Africa than in Europe or the US, where, where facilities for seniors have often turned into deadly hotspots. Um, people in many African countries have also often had previous experience with other epidemics and generally seem to have followed health screening and social distancing advice for COVID-19. Um, high humidity might have played a limiting role in some countries. Uh, the virus seems to spread better in, in drier, cooler environments. And there are indeed some theories that many Africans might have more robust immune responses to SARS-CoV-2 due to previous exposure to, to other pathogens. Uh, but that hypothesis uh, still hasn't been backed up by, by convincing evidence.